Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm on my second run of some of my crystals, and there was just some pretty crystal formation of trees in the bottom that I wanted to show you all. So I'm going to do a demonstration and see if we could get some of this liquid off of these crystals without the crystals actually collapsing. And what I have is I have my bowl of crystals, and in the background, if you'll notice, I have a vacuum flask. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take this nozzle glass, which I have here, which is connected to my vacuum flask, and this operates under the vacuum pump that I have outside, the same vacuum pump that operates my Buckner funnel. And what I have here is I have just a T in this hose, and you can hear the air hissing, and that's the vacuum. Now you don't. I have vacuum on this nozzle. Now usually I have a little bitty adjustable wheel in here and these are used for aquariums so you can adjust the air outflow. This is a T, but I usually have an adjustable valve here that I can use to control my vacuum to my flask. If you don't control your vacuum and it's just running full blast, you'll wind up splashing this stuff everywhere. And this is just a thousand milliliter flask with a rubber stopper where I've drilled two holes in it. And put a piece of uh, Teflon tubing here. And this is just some polyvinyl chloride tubing. One goes to my air vacuum pump outside and comes through here where I can control my vacuum now. And the other is for the nozzle that will remove the solution and bring it into our flask over here. Now, we're going to slowly try to remove this solution to see if we can get down to some of these crystals so y'all can get a good look. I just hope these don't collapse in the process. And if you'll notice, our vacuum flask in the back is drawing our liquid off slowly. And we're using our nozzle down here. Now, we're not jabbing it all the way in there. We're keeping it just below the surface. And we're still slowly just drawing the liquid off. And notice our flask is slowly filling up. And when we remove it, of course, the stream will stop. And you can see the pretty dense crystals on the top that have formed. But the ones in the bottom are these trees. And that's exhibited in nature and other things like lightning. The trees are moving towards the flow and growing towards the flow of the electrical current is what they're doing. And I've got about 3,000 milliliters of liquid in this bowl, so I'm going to remove a thousand real quick, and we're going to cut away, and I'm going to empty my flask in the back. And we're going to cut away, and we're going to come back, we're going to see if we can get down to the bottom of this solution. All right, gentlemen, we're back after we removed some of our solution from the bowl, and if you look in the top right hand corner there you'll see some of our silver nitrate solution of course we have some copper in there also and you'll notice that our filter flask is empty again now I told you there's about 3,000 milliliters in this setup so we're going to work on our second thousand milliliters and see if we can look at some of these pretty crystals that have grown in the bottom of the bowl so we're just going to come back now and we're going to take the tip and we're going to stick it down under the solution. And the reason you don't want to stick it all the way up to here is because depth perception. You can't tell how far this item really is from something in the bottom of the solution because of the way that the water magnifies it. Plus, the further you stick it down in the solution, the more of the solution you get all over the tube. So, you need to uh, make sure that you take a spray bottle and rinse that off. Now, a lot of times I use this, I'm a gold refiner also. 
And it's, whenever you go to decant a solution, you'll let a solution settle for about 24 hours. So all the heavy particulate falls out. But when you go to decant that solution, if you try to pour the top off of it, a lot of times you'll stir up sediment in the bottom. You'll get that hung in your filter paper and it will lead to nightmares for filtering. So you could use this same trick for decanting out of a beaker. I could stick this down in this beaker so far if there was solid settled in the bottom and withdraw just about the last little drop of that liquid and leaving the sediment in the bottom. You could then take that liquid and pour it through your Buckner funnel and it will travel through fast. What happens is when you try to tilt that beaker and stir that sediment up, you've got to all of a sudden run this whole volume of solution with that sediment through your Buckner funnel or you're faced with waiting 24 more hours for it to settle. If you opt out and run it through the Buckner funnel, you're going to have three, four, five times as long to filter that solution as if you had just drawn the top clean solution off, filtered that, and then poured the dirty particulate in top of the Buckner funnel to rinse out the rest. Now, now I've given that little course. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this solution and see if we can see some crystals. I'm betting on these long stringy crystals over here on the right. They're probably going to collapse because they're it out there over an edge but I'm hoping these ones that look like bushes down here in the very bottom tend to stay upright as we remove the solution so we're going to start back to removing our solution again just drawing it off the top slowly and first thing that's going to clear our solution will probably be these ones on the side here this will tell us how well these crystals are going to hold up as we draw this liquid off. I'm betting the weight of the solution alone may be the only thing that's supporting that. But we'll see. And notice we've removed about 400 milliliters of solution in the back. And we're about to break the solution on these on the edge here. And they're starting. You've got to be very careful not to shake this bowl. If you do and disturb them, they're liable to break apart. Now, of course, when you get ready to melt them, it don't matter if they're broke all the pieces or not but right now I'm just trying to do this for a video demonstration for you gentlemen and that one's holding up pretty good our bushes down in the very bottom are also starting to clear the top of the solution so we don't want it to oh the one on the sides trying to collapse Another collapse. Okay, that's another thousand milliliters of solution that we've drawn off now. You want to take your squirt bottle and you want to hold it over your tip and lightly rinse it off. Most of it will be sucked up in the tip and clean out your line. Okay, I'm going to get a good shot on some of these crystals now so you can see what's in the bottom of this bowl. And our trees that have grown in the bottom, our little forest. The ones on the side. Okay, gentlemen, we're going to cut away now and empty our other 1,000 milliliter flask into our baker and we'll be right back to continue to try to get to the bottom of this. Alright, gentlemen, we've emptied some more of our solution from our bowl and as you can see in the back right corner, we've drawn off about 2,000 milliliters of solution now. 
Our beaker is another thousand, so by the time we finish it will all be contained in those two beakers. And then you will take it, put it back in your stainless pot, add copper like in the previous video to recover your cemented powder. Now let's get back to trying to recover our silver crystals from the bottom here. We're going to start to remove some more solution. And see if we can see the top of the trees a little bit. And our trees are starting to clear the solution. silver crystals. These things are liable to collapse at any minute like an iceberg in Alaska. But they seem to be holding together pretty good. I just hope you're getting the definition of these silver crystals on this camera like I am using my eyes. Oh, they collapsed a little bit. That's alright, they're still holding their mass. Sparkly like new diamonds. And we don't like but a couple of hundred more milliliters of solution. And of course what I'll do here before I break these loose from the bowl is I'll take my squirt bottle and I'll rinse the crystals on the side, allow them to drain into the bottom to where I can wash some of the silver nitrate from them. And then I can empty them from my bowl and prep them for melting, which we've demonstrated already. And we're almost to the very, very bottom. And if you'll look at my beaker in the back, I'm actually just a slight bit over a thousand. So actually, I guess I had about 3,100 milliliters of solution in my silver cell. Now we started out with about 3,000 but as much as we've been squirting to rinse our uh, tools back off into our silver cell, it's added to some of the solution. Some has evaporated, some has been replaced. But there you can get an idea of the silver crystals in the bottom. And that, gentlemen, is the easy way to empty your silver cell.